The Susan Brinder Show is a radio show online broadcasted on YouTube across the United States and globally. The show features guests who speak about health, spirituality, entertainment, and a host of subjects to enlighten people across the nation. Listen to the show that empowers women and men alike and highlights those who have made a difference. I'm Susan Brender, and this is The Susan Brender Show. Today, I have a friend who's been on the show many times, and there's a reason that he's been on the show, because he has a lot to talk about, and I want to thank him for being on the show. Now, first, he wrote a book called Under the Divi Tree, which I thought was a really, really wonderful book, and tell me, Michael, is this the last book that you've written, or is there more coming up? There's more coming up. Um... My latest, which hopefully will be out by October, is a, an expose on the climate scam that's been going on for the last 30 years in this country. Yeah. Uh, the title of the book is Allegory at the moment. Um, I actually show the scientific evidence to prove that the earth has been cooling for the last 20 years, not getting warmer. The glaciers are not melting, they're getting larger. The Hubbard Glacier, for example, has frozen over that it's blocked the sea lanes that cruise ships now have to go 40 kilometers out of their way to take passengers there to see it. The Antarctica is growing in leaps and bounds. The Arctic Circle is growing at an average of 24% a year in ice. And, uh, and that's basically it. And all we're doing is ruining the, the atmosphere with electric vehicles because it takes over 1,600 gallons of fossil fuel to produce enough lithium to, for one battery. Yeah. And they want to go to electric. Well, we'll get into that later because we're going to talk about climate afterwards. But uh, that's right. That's right. But, but that my my publisher is driving me crazy. She's put me on a deadline. She, sure. She wants because my manuscript a, by the end of the month. So uh, yeah, it's a very and I'm, important leave, and I'm leaving to Europe on Tuesday. So it's kind of, it's going to be a tough write. Yeah. You know, Michael Solomon, you've had an extensive career in law enforcement. You've served over 20 search warrants and five wiretaps in your career. Four days ago, former President Donald J. Trump said on Monday that the FBI had searched his Palm Beach, Florida home and had broken open a safe. Now, let me hear what you have to say about that, because this is really just the most horrible thing. Well... You've got to look at the Fourth Amendment. You know, to, uh, let, let's 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 review it as quickly as possible. First of all, I, I, I said twenty search warrants that, that that I can't remember. <laughs> there must have been closer to thirty or forty. But um, the Fourth Amendment specifically says that the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, and no warrant shall be issued upon probable cause. And it must be supported by oath or affirmation and in particularly describing the place to be searched, the persons and the things to be seized. You can't just um, walk in and, and decide that this is what I want to search. And you've got to raise it. Now, the operative words in the amendment is probable cause. Probable cause is a higher bar to reach than reasonable suspicion. From, you know, from what I've heard, all the FBI had was reasonable suspicion, which was based on an unfounded report from an unidentified informant. That's not probable cause. Probable cause is simply defined this way. If you've got, for example, let's say somebody calls up a police department and they said, you know, I think my neighbor across the street is selling drugs because every day kids are going to his door and if exchanging cash and he hands them a little package and they jump in their car and they take off. Well, that's reasonable suspicion because there's no probable cause yet. Nobody saw the drugs. Nobody knows exactly what's happening. So the police will go out there and they'll send out an undercover officer and maybe he'll, he'll grab some kid going, walking away from the premise and finds out the kid is buying drugs. The kid makes an appointment, introduces the undercover officer. The undercover officer goes out, buys drugs now illegally and He's just elevated reasonable suspicion to probable cause, and now you can get a search warrant. Let me stop so, you here. Yeah. You know, this has sparked a huge outrage in America. What do you think about that? Well, the outrage, you know, honestly, I, you know, I look at it this way. Um, this has been going on for God knows how long. Uh, ever, since, ever since Trump was... Uh, 
was came down the the, uh, the escalator and said he was running for president. They were they were going after him. I mean, this was crazy. Everything they tried to do, everything they tried to do, was based on lies. The Russia hoax was a lie. Uh, or every just about everything they've done was basically a lie. Uh, they did they, they try to get him on anything they can. Now they're getting him on. I don't know what they what's in the search warrant. There's no way we're going to know until unless somebody releases it. Yes. But the application, from what I understand at this point, is based on unfounded suspicion. You can't get a search warrant on unfounded suspicion. And here's the thing that drives me crazy. When I was, when I applied for a search warrant, first of all, you had to make out an application. You had to swear to it in front of a judge, not a magistrate, a part-time magistrate, but a judge. Why did they come to Florida to find a, a local magistrate to sign off on a search warrant when they have all these courts in in, in Washington and, and everything else. And uh, the president says he knew nothing about it. He doesn't talk to his, uh, his attorney general. Give me a break. He let doesn't me talk to his son either. Well, what's the difference? So uh, let me ask you something, Michael. What is the protocol for doing such a raid on someone like the former president? Because that is a travesty. The travesty was this. Legally, legally, the person whose premise is being searched is allowed to stand there, stay there and observe the search. He is allowed, his attorneys are allowed to be there. From what I understand, they barred their attorneys from even entering the premise. They wouldn't even let them stay in the vestibule of Mar-a-Lago. I've been there many times and, and it, where it was cool. I mean, it was 95 degrees outside and they had to stand outside for six or seven hours, whatever the time it was that took them to complete the search in the hot sun. And they weren't uh, allowed in there, which is, which is absolutely wrong. Yeah. But uh, the DOJ had requested documents before the raid, and Trump had cooperated. Why do you think this again happened? Well, he has, and 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 I don't know why uh, all of a sudden there's a search. They're suddenly looking now. That from what from what I understand today, there was something dealing with nuclear weapons. Give me a break. Uh, if there was anything going on with nuclear weapons, I'm sure the Department of Defense would have known about it. So, um, why, so why would the lawyers not allow inside during the raid? Is that normal? No, not at all. Not at all. Anytime we had it, we, we, we executed the search warrant or even, in, well, an ex parte would be a wiretap. But anytime we, we executed the search warrant, if the suspect picked up the phone and called his attorney, he has every right to do that, and his attorney showed up, we would just tell the attorney, this is what we have. Here's a copy of the warrant. We show him the warrant. This is what we're searching, and that's it. Now, during the search, there are certain principles that you must adhere to. And if you violate one of them, the entire warrant gets thrown out. Perfect example. I'll give you something that what we call the, uh, the principle of the elephant in a matchbox. If you have a search warrant and you're looking for a stolen elephant from the circus, you can't open a matchbox. You can't fit an elephant in a matchbox. If you're looking for machine guns, you can't open a medicine cabinet. You can't put a machine gun in a medicine cabinet. So if you've got a warrant that spells out X, you can't open up Y looking for something where it's impossible. We would get around it. I mean, there's ways of getting around it. For example, if we were looking for a machine gun, we would go out and we would say, okay, and machine guns and parts thereof. Well, parts thereof are bullets. You could put a bullet, you can hide bullets in a medicine cabinet or a jewelry box. So there's no problem in that case with searching your jewelry box. Let's say I open up the jewelry box and I find two ounces of cocaine. I can't seize it right. unless I amend the warrant. Right. The so cocaine you... has to be found legally. Looking in the jewelry box is legal as long as that warrant says or parts thereof. Mm -hmm. So there's so many little things that you have to do. To, to do that. You can't just, you know, walk in there and tear the whole house apart. We had a narcotics warrant. We used to take paneling off the walls because you can hide the drugs sure. and paneling. That's right. You know, do you agree that the law has been weaponized to use against a political candidate for presidency? I was appalled when I heard that they were searching Mar-a-Lago. I mean, first of all, it's a private club. All right. He does live there. Part of it is, is his residence. So the, 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 the thing, the other part of this whole thing is, number one, about 85% of that building is a, pub, is a club, is a private club. You, the only thing that I would, if I was, was running that operation, if I was the agent who obtained that warrant, I would know that the only part of that building that I could search would be the private residence. Not the club, not the gym, not the event halls, 
not the kitchens, only the private residence of the person, because that the other part of that building is not considered is not considered part. Uh, even though he may have control over it, you know, uh, it does. It's not part of his residence. So, so, do you think that Biden knew about the raid? Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. You're going to tell me that that the, <laughs> the attorney general okayed a, a search of a former president, and he didn't inform the current president of the United States. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of in my life. But of course, he may have told them, and he didn't remember. So, yeah. okay. That's right. So, what, why do you think they? What do you think that they were looking for? Because I don't know. I have no idea. Originally, they said it was uh, um, papers that were confidential reports that uh, presidential papers. He was turning them over. As a matter of fact. I think in beginning of June, they had a meeting and they, and they walked in there and he says, by the way, here's everything that I, that I removed from, from the uh, Oval Office. And uh, I have a documents room here too. Here's the keys. You can go in there and, and take what you need. Just, you know, just let me know what you're taking. I mean, they took a letter from President Obama to him, which is normal, which is normal protocol. You know, a prior president, former president usually writes a nice letter to the incoming president. I mean, what are they going to do with that? What's criminal about that? Yeah, well, What's listen, criminal about the letter that, that he received from Kim Jong-un? I mean, give me a break. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so is there a possibility that evidence could have been used to keep Donald Trump from running again? Do you think that's the case? No, there's nothing in the Constitution that says he can't run. There's nothing in the Constitution that says if you got a felony arrest or a conviction, you can't be the president. I've never seen that in the Constitution. Yeah. And he's so not been convicted measures? of anything. He's never even been indicted. Yeah. So what measures can be used to stop this from happening again? Because this is, as I said before, a travesty. What can be done? I don't know. The Supreme yeah. Court has to get involved. I, I would imagine so. I, I just don't, don't understand how they can get away with this. Yeah. I just don't understand it. Well, now let's talk a little bit about the greening of the society, because this seems to be the right, the, the left's big, big challenge. They say that the country is warming up and the world is warming up. And I'm just thinking that you must know the real facts. So tell us really what's happening. In doing my research, and not only recently, but for years, because I've been, I've been speaking and lecturing on, on global climate change for years all over the world. The last major uh, lecture I gave was in Shanghai, uh, China, and it was to about 200 Americans who were there on business and, and pleasure. And um, when, when, when I got finished talking, they sat there with their mouths open. They said, why hasn't anybody ever told us this before? I mean, I gave them evidence. I showed them uh, satellite photographs from NASA and reports from scientists, not from consensus scientists, but real actual uh, scientific principles. Um, the new bill that they passed this week, the, the uh, climate and tax bill, uh, as a matter of fact, I was, the New York Times had an article this morning uh, talking about the side, the huge side benefit of the new climate bill, and they're talking about health problems all over the country. Um, the climate tax bill, which is expected to pass this Friday, has a huge, they say it has a huge benefit in it, and they, which people haven't even thought about. And um, what, it, what, the, what their article said was that it's going to go a long way for improving the health throughout the United States. You want to improve the health of the United States, why don't we just ban cigarettes and alcohol, you know, and drugs? They, they, they want to protect the health of the United States? Close the southern border. Look at all the fentanyl that's coming over there. We're killing 100,000 kids a year with fentanyl coming over from through the southern border from China. And they, they want it, they're talking, they're worried about atmos the atmosphere. Let me tell you a little something about, about the atmosphere. You know, they talk about dirty oceans and everything else. Mm -hmm. More people have died from shark attacks in the United States than anybody in the world from dirty ocean water. Nobody dies from dirty ocean water. People may get sick, but nobody's gonna die, may get dysentery or something. So that's basically it. Um, but you know, Michael, let me ask you this. You have the science and the right feels the same way you do, but the left, and I'm talking about the radical left, they're mm -hmm. the ones who talk all about the greening of society and what is going to happen and how people are going to die and 
you know, all these let me horrible tell you, things. Let me tell you how, the, how society is being greened, Susan. When I was a detective, almost every case in the Organized Crime Control Bureau where I was a, a special investigator, we started with following the money. And that's what I did here. I followed the money. Albert Gore, former vice president of the United States, started a company with David Blood, who was the asset manager for Morgan Stanley, called in Generation Investment Management. They do green energy investing and brokering carbon credits. The company is set up in the UK so they can beat US taxes, uh, or at least a portion of them, um, except for the portion that they, of business that they do in the United States. And they average approximately $218 million a year in profits from green energy and carbon credits. And that's where their money's coming from. So we, I followed the money and I looked at it. And then I found out that Mr. Gore um, buys what's known as carbon offsets. So he can stop the, the $34,000 a year he spends um, in heating his home and, and warming up his swimming pool. He writes a check for $432 a month to, 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 for what they call carbon offsets. Now, let me tell you how a carbon offset works. That's like me paying my neighbor to raise the temperature of his air conditioning so I could lower mine and cool my house more than his. That's what a carbon offset is. I'm paying somebody else so that they don't use the energy and I'm allowed now. So that absolves my guilt. And that's how Al Gore is operating. He spends more a year than the average person spends in... Um, in five years in heating a home. But let me ask you something, Michael. People believe in this phenomena and they, they li literally, literally, so many people believe in it. And I don't understand because you have the science and they don't, but on the other hand, they should. They got, they got, they got something that I don't have, Susan, that I'll have it soon is a soapbox. They are gaslighting the world. Absolutely gaslighting the world. They have this statement. It's called the science is settled. When you look at their science, it's consensus science. You put 50 or 100 scientists in a room, you throw out an idea and they say, hey, yeah, I can see that. That works. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a consensus. One of those scientists does the experiment and says, sorry, guys, but here's the experiment. It's wrong. That's a scientific principle. You cannot debate that. Perfect example. If all the sea ice, all the floating ice in the world today melted overnight, guess how much beachfront property we would lose around the world? Zero. There is something called displacement. There was a man called Archimedes. It's a scientific principle, not a consensus opinion, a scientific principle. If you took a glass and filled it above the rim with ice cubes and then poured water right to the edge of the rim and the ice was floating above the glass, when that ice melts, that glass will never overflow. But never. Michael, here's the thing. When you talk to people about this issue, they say there's a real problem, a very big problem, and they don't understand the science, as I said before, because when I talk to my friends or I talk to other people, they say to me, yeah, we're worried about the world. We're worried about the, everything that it is going to change with uh, regard to climate change. So I'm asking you, why do you think that they don't know about it? As because much they as don't do? take the time. They don't take the time to look up the science. They're so busy reading the headlines and, and listening to the rhetoric, Susan, that, that they just don't, they don't want to fend for themselves. They don't care. Let me give you a couple of facts that people don't realize. 200 years ago, the world was four and a half degrees warmer than it is today. Did it melt? 175 years ago, there was no ice in Iceland. There was no glaciers. That's a scientific fact. Greenland was called Greenland because it was green. That's a fact. The Hubbard Glacier since 1973 to today has grown 26 kilometers. It's blocked the sea lanes. They can't get through. 
The two warmest periods in the last 50 years were because of two volcanoes, the Pinatabo volcano and the, um, and the other volcano in Mexico. And the yeah. temperature went up a quarter of a degree over a year because of those two volcanoes and the temperature has settled back. That's what's <laughs> causing it. Here's the, other Here's the other problem which you don't realize, okay? They want to develop a hydrogen car because they claim that hydrogen uh, motors pump out water vapors on the road and not, and not carbon dioxide. Well, cars don't give off carbon dioxide. They give off carbon monoxide. So here's what they, here's what they tell you. They'll come out with this statement. Well, when you mix carbon monoxide with oxygen, you get carbon dioxide. That is true, Susan, but you have to, you have to mix it with 100% pure oxygen. Our atmosphere is only 12 to 15% oxygen. If it was 100% pure oxygen, the first one who lit up a cigarette in this world would blow us up to Mars. You know, we've got the media talking all about this subject matter, and yet they don't really make people understand what's because happening. Because they're gaslighted like the rest of the world. It, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. They come out with all kinds of things. Let me tell you, let me give you a, a little example about everybody wants to go electric vehicles. Okay. Electric vehicles. That's the worst thing in the world for us. And you know why it's the worst thing in the world? Because, because it takes lithium about, batteries, maybe. Well, here's the problem with the batteries. It takes 1600 gallons of fossil fuel to mine enough lithium to produce one battery. And they want to get rid of everything. And they want to go with elect with, uh, with windmills and everything else. Well, guess what? You can have you can have a windmill on every corner in, in the United States, right? You got to have batteries to store the energy. It would take five hundred years to produce enough batteries to supply electricity for the United States for one day. That's uh -huh. a fact. That is a scientific fact. So why don't the the people or why do the squad? push this subject matter on everybody because they all get money i made a lot of money last week buying a, a global stock on on an energy stock once they passed that bill and the senate passed the bill i went out and i bought a couple of stocks i'm not shy about it mm -hmm. if they can do it why can't i if nancy pelosi's husband can go out there and spend five million dollars buying a battery company because they passed a bill that that gave that battery company all kinds of perks and he can make 30 or 40%. Why can't I? Except yeah. I didn't have inside information like they did. Yeah, I did it on my own. I says, well, you know, um, they, they cut the pipeline. I think I'm going to buy oil futures because oil is probably going to go up. Well, fine. But I did yeah. that on my own. <laughs> Nobody told me the day before they were cutting the pipeline that they were cutting it. You know, I didn't get the inside information. Is it, is it that people are so stupid that they don't really know what's going on? They don't know, Susan. They don't care. They talk about, oh, my God, there's a tax increase. There's no tax increase. You know who's going to get taxed in this new, new tax bill? Everybody who earns under $75,000. That's a fact. The government said it. And the they said, CEO said he, The president comes out the other day and he says, we have zero inflation. No, we don't. No. That's what we had was 8.5 percent inflation it didn't go up month to month so it's zero no it didn't rise but the the numbers came out yesterday it's 9.8 percent where was he i haven't heard a word from him yet Two hundred fifty-eight thousand new jobs last month of course they count them twice if right. a person has two jobs if during the day he's working somewhere he's in a night he's sweeping factory floors to to support his family they call that two jobs that's not right well, we know that our president is really a little bit out of it, but what about the fact that the vice president, she doesn't even know a thing about this climate change situation, and yet she talks to kids and teaches them what it's all about, how we have to save our world, and that's, you know, that's her scenario. So I'm just wondering what you think is going to happen in the next election. Um, I just hope America wakes up. I hope the voters wake up because they're being, they're being gaslighted. They're being take, raked over the coals and it's all about money. It's all about money. That's it. People don't realize it. 
Yeah. Nine hundred billion dollars. People don't even know what a billion dollars is. They throw numbers around like it's nothing. You know how much a billion dollars is? Let me give you an example, Susan. If you had thousand dollar bills, brand new crisp one thousand dollar bills that came out of the treasury, they were just printed today, and you stack them up one on top of the other, you know how tall the pile would be? Five hundred eighty seven feet taller than the Washington Monument. That's one billion dollars. Mm. If you had single dollar bills. OK, and you and you had a trillion dollars, they throw numbers around like they're nothing. A trillion dollars in single dollar bills would go to the sun and back 17 times. The sun is 17 is is 93 million miles away from Earth. It would it would go to the sun and back 17 times end to end dollar mm. bills for one trillion dollars. And we've got a th- almost a 30 trillion dollar deficit come around and they say this bill is going to help us reduce the deficit by $250 billion. Well, let me explain how it works, okay? That's like having a mortgage on your house. And you borrow, you go to another bank and you borrow, say, $250,000 to pay off the first mortgage. And you turn around and you say, I don't have that mortgage anymore. You still owe the bank $250,000. You haven't reduced anything. It's all a numbers game. They don't do it. They no. You know, it, it's it's frightening how, how they've got people gaslighted. But what I mean, what do you think about? Do you think we're in a an inflationary a time or a recession? What's your thoughts about that? Here's my thoughts about it. Okay, the Fed has been raising rates for the last six months. So far, they raised them three times, three quarters of a percent, and they expect to raise them again at the end of this month by another three quarters of a point what they call 75 basis points. Mortgages have jumped from two and a half to 3% all the way up to almost 7% now. When they have another raise at the end of the month, mortgages are probably going to hit closer to nine or 10%. We haven't seen that in 40 years. Hmm. The housing market is already taking a turn for it for the worse. Uh, new housing is slowing down. Prices are coming down. It's going to be a buyer's market pretty soon. Um, I mean, it's, it sounds crazy, but that's exactly what's happening. People right. have been so used to mortgages that have been under 3.5% for the last 10 years, 15 years, and now all of a sudden they think, oh, this is the greatest thing going. They're going to destroy this economy. They're destroying it, and, and there's nothing we can do about it. And they, yeah. and they turn around and they say, well, oh, gas prices are coming down. Look what I'm doing. No, he didn't lower gas prices. You know who lowered the gas prices in this country? The drivers, when you stop driving, the demand goes down. When the demand goes down, in order to sell it, you got to lower the price. That's what's driving the gas prices down. Well, let me ask you something, Michael. When um, this situation, maybe in the next election, turns all around and the Republicans win the the election, what do you think is going to happen then? The problem you've got is this. The problem you've got is no matter what bills the, the, the Republicans put forward, they, they can have 100% of the Senate, they can have 100% of the Congress, I don't care what bills they put forward, unless they got enough votes to override a veto, they're going to be in deep doo-doo, because, yeah. they, they, because the president will veto it, and if they haven't got enough votes to override it, you need two-thirds, they're not going to be able to get anything passed. That, well, that's the problem. And when you cut taxes, when you cut taxes, believe it or not, the Treasury collects more money, not less, more money. If you have 100 people paying 20 cents and you cut the taxes to 15 percent, but you put another 100 people back to work. Now you have 200 people paying 15 percent. We had 100 people paying 20 percent before you're collecting more money. When you yeah. cut taxes on corporations, they don't have to go out there and hire a whole bank of attorneys and, and, and accountants to, to look for the tax laws to try to try to beat the taxes and try to get around it with deductions. They say, you know what, the, the, the rate's low enough. I'm not going to hire all these attorneys. I'm just going to pay the taxes. You collect more money. That's the facts. It's a simple, simple economics 101. So, Michael, do you, do you have hope? Yeah, do you think things are going to change when the electorate becomes more Republican? I, I certainly hope so, because, you know, I got to be honest with you. When, when President Trump left office, it wasn't for the fact that he was hated so. And, and I have to be honest with you. I like what he did. I didn't like the way he, he operated as far as uh, his tweets and everything else. If he kept his mouth shut and he threw away his cell phone, we would have been a lot better off. 
Yeah. But the things he did, the, the, the jobs, the cutting of the taxes, the fact that we went four years without a war. Why do you think, what do you, do you think that if Trump was president today, that this would be going on in the Ukraine and we'd be buying oil from Iran and Russia? Well, you're asking the wrong question to oh, me. I know. I'm not, no, I'm asking, I'm, I'm being better, you know, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I get it. You know, I I'm get metaphorical it. about it. But the, uh, I mean, it's crazy. What did, what did Biden do? Trump promised the Ukraine weapons and everything else to, to bolster them up, to keep Russia in, at bay. And what happened? Biden negated it. Well, so I, he's talking to Iran. He's buying billions of dollars. He's buying oil from Venezuela. Trump gave him a gift. We were energy independent, energy independent. So now what are we doing? We're buying oil from Russia. We're shipping it over here in, 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 in boats and in tankers. Uh, it, it, it's being dug out of the ground a lot dirtier than we could take it out of the ground here. And they're playing these games. You know, I mean, now we used up half our reserves. If we run into a problem, we have a we go to war. We don't have any oil reserves. Yeah. So let me ask you something, Michael. What's in store for you next? Because you are just absolutely wonderful. You talk about the greening of the society. You talk about what's happening with Trump. So, what would you think is going to be the subject next time? I don't know, Susan. It's changing <laughs> every day. We okay. are- I ask you that because there is so many things that are wrong in this election and the, this it's president. It's not only the election, Susan. It's this whole woke society and everything else. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, they came out the other day and they said that um, the Times article this morning said the microscopic pollution that's out there is because the particles are so small that they're hurting people's lungs and we have worse asthma and everything else. And then they said it's been linked to developmental problems in children. You want to fix developmental problems in children? Open up the schools and get rid of the masks. There you go. There you go. Well, this has been a really great show with Michael Solomon, who is an author, who is a pundit, and who's a friend of the Susan Brenda Show. And I want to find out, and so do our audience, how they get in touch with you. Well, you can go to my website, uh, michaelsolomonbooks.com. My, all my books are listed there and whatever else. Uh, my Facebook page, Michael Solomon, where um, I, I don't post every day. It's not the kind of thing I do. Only if things are important, if I'm doing a TV show like I did yesterday, uh, that's up there, the video and stuff. And, uh, and that's it. And um, what's on the horizon is I'm heading off to Europe next week for a month and see how the rest of the world's living. And uh, we'll see what happens. But, well, um, Unfortunately, we're, we're living in, in crazy times. I have faith in America. That's I'm not too thing. happy about what's happening, especially at the southern border. It's, it's only a matter of time when something drastic is going to happen. I, I hate to say it, but uh, somewhere down the road, there's going to be another 9-11. And it, well, it, let's it talk about the, that in the next it, show. because it frightens the hell out of me, Susan. Yeah, I, I know that. And I realize that what you say makes a lot of sense. And our medium better talk a little bit about the the realities of society. So I want to thank you, Michael, for being on the Susan Brenda Show. It's really been a pleasure. Well, it's my pleasure too, Susan. Thank you. 